Hello! Welcome to Bubbles Travelling Yarns! Yes, I have a spinning wheel out. It's Tour de France season. I'm not part of any group. But today I managed to carve out a bit of time to myself after a night shift. Um, James has taken baby down to out for a walk on this beautiful day. We've been kind of running in and out of showers the whole time, so you know, I'm expecting to have to pick up and run in any time, but in between the showers, my goodness, this weather's stunning. I've got my sun cream on and I just, you know, July, finally. In between the showers, it's a nice July. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have, I've been spinning on this project that I've been spinning on from <laughs> since, I think it was before COVID, 2020 20, or 2019 maybe, or something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, this project is a Sweet Georgia um, project um, combined with some uh, fiber from John Arbin. Now I am a Sweet Georgia ambassador and um, there is some absolutely stunning, stunning yarn over there and fibers. And I want to just remind you, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this a couple of times. This is eventually going to be a jumper. I've actually measured out all my, do you want some fluff? I'll have it there, I'll just put it there in case you need it. But um, I'm trying to remember <laughs> what bits are. So I managed to do a three ply and split the yarn into body and two sleeves. So my aim is to do, this is the body. This is enough that for the body. This is from a Sweet Georgia braid, which I can't remember. That's terrible. And then these are, did I have? These are a quarter of a braid, basically. This is a half a braid and these are two quarters. So together they weigh the same. Um, they seem like they don't, but this one's wound a lot looser than these ones. Um, so these are all three ply. And I think I did a, I tried to keep the colors together. So we'll see what they come up in. So I have three different colors of these. I've got a it's kind of a, a tonal blue just here. And then I've got a more purpley, purpley tealy blue. And then I've got a proper purple. Purple and pinks, purples and pinks. Now I can't remember the codes and the colors and all that, but they do look super pretty. And I've also got all the sleeves as well. So my plan is to combine it either with a fair isle situation or um, stripes with this stunning indigo um, colorway from, it's kind of a tealy, tealy blue from John Arbin. Now I've been going with this project so long, I've lost all my, lost all my labels, lost everything, so useful. However, if you do want to have a look, you can have a look at the previous posts where I have talked about this. Um, I'll try and find them and, and tag them, <laughs> put them in the video, but it's been a long time, so I don't know. So they've all this kind of been sitting in a bag and the wheel has been hidden behind a chair. And we're at the stage now where I'm teaching my daughter not to touch things. So this is a good opportunity to get the wheel out. And it's a little bit frustrating, but you know what? We're learning. All of us are learning how to control our emotions. Hang on, where is this coming from? I'm going to now. Oh, hang on. Um, so I am using an Ashford Traveller with a woolly winder, which is literally the best thing since sliced bread. I, I know they cost a fortune. They do. They are pricey, but I don't have to stop to move stuff. I literally can just spin. It has changed my spinning game, especially with like a toddler. Whereas, you know, if I was stopping in between each one, she comes up and she like tries to move the wheel. She's like, excuse me, you're not spinning. Get back to work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so um so yeah i'm really enjoying this i only have this last bobbin to fill and then i have these ready to go so i just need one more bobbin i actually only have three uh of these special woolly winder bobbins they have a little um a, a, what's it called a gear on the end of them on both sides that actually help the woolly winder kind of wind on 
Um, so I actually need to do a three ply. I you need four. What's that? Oh, a crochet hook. Very handy. You actually need four to ply onto. So you have. So I'm going to put three bobbins down here. There's two little. There's three little um, kind of slots for the bobbins to go on to and then one bobbin on here and then you ply on to the last the fourth bobbin so I don't actually have a woolly winder one but I do have all my old kit so I can turn it back into like a normal uh, thing with like all the different hooks along the side so I'll just manually move it along um, but I think it's going to be it's probably going to fill two bobbins really because these are over half full um, each one so yeah I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to work really but and I've a little bit of an issue with my tension here. I think I need to get in here and screw down. The metal plates have actually warped. I'm under so much pressure. Um, either that and I've noticed that this band also uh, needs to be changed because there is a bit of shearing and some parts of it have actually, there's only a cotton thread. Um, I do think I have a PVC, a plastic, um one but i need to find it in my my storeroom of terror so i'm kind of scared to go in there and i think i can definitely find cotton thread a little bit easier butcher's butcher's uh butcher's twine is the best actually for making a um what's that even called drive shaft drive band drive band for making a drive band butcher's butcher's um Twine is really really good option and cheap but there is a kind of a, a plastic uh, solid band which is also really good and has a bit more stretch in it so you can um, the tension you can kind of fiddle with a little bit more whereas if you put too much tension on this it just kind of shears and starts wearing away so I'm kind of at that stage now when I didn't really notice but hopefully I would like to try and get this project finished on this the way it's set up but it's probably going to snap. I'm not going to be shocked if it just snaps in this video. How exciting. Um, but it's not going to be a big deal. It's not a big deal to fix it. Um, that's why I kind of love spinning wheels. They're, you really kind of get a bit technically minded. But it's quite simple stuff. I know it seems complicated, but it is actually quite simple. Um, once you kind of figure it out. I suppose everything's simple once you figure it out. Um, but yeah. So I'm just going to stop now. It's so addictive. Oh my God, I've missed spinning so much. It's just too dangerous with the kitties, young ones, you know, crawling around. And, I mean, she already has slapped her finger on something when she went in too fast and I wasn't, I was too fast to catch her. But you know what? She learned. <laughs> she has to learn. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to stop there and I'm going to show you a project. I have a finished object, sort of, kind of. I haven't wound in the irons, classic, typical. Um, but this is my hat that I was knitting for myself and now it's more for my little girl because it's far too small. <laughs> so I've left on the irons because I'm not sure whether I want to do a pom-pom or not. I think not. Um, this will fit her like for the next six Christmases. <laughs> It's quite big, but I can always I can always um, turn up the brim and pop it on her like that. Little beanie, little beanie toque, toque. Um, but the stitch is, I actually never, somebody recommend, someone uh, commented on the last video, the style of stitch that I was using. I'm just going to call it like a bloom stitch. I think they called it a bloom stitch, but um, it worked out really cute and I'm delighted with it. I love the texture. I love the 3D effect of it. It looks fab. I managed to decrease quite well, I think. Um, it's not super obvious where the decreases are, but it's not such a little pointy top that it's quite nice. So um, yeah, I just need to wind in or I just need to sew in the threads. But I realized I had absolutely loads of yarn left over. So I instantly, the second I finished off that one, I just didn't have my... Um, my uh what's it called darning hook darning needle so but i did have a crochet hook so i was like hey let's just crochet a hat for me <laughs> so here we are crocheting hat we're in the decreases section it's quite it feels quite big but then when i actually put it on it doesn't feel quite big so i think it's going to be 
totally fine. So I'm starting to decrease here. Sorry for my little hair tie. And I need to decrease quite fast, I think. So I have got not that much orange left. I have this much orange and this much brown. So I think I'm probably going to make it just to finish off the hat with the orange. And then I'm going to have loads of brown left. So I might do something, maybe some leg warmers or something. That'll be easy. Um, I really want to use it all up because it's lovely stuff. I bought it in Tasmania when I was working down there. Um, I, there's actually a podcast of me working in Tasmania, if anyone is interested to go back to the start. Um, but I'm doing crochet and I haven't done crochet in a long, long time. And I am loving it. It is so quick. It is so happy. Oh, it's so satisfying. So I hold, <laughs> I hold my yarn uh, like I do my knitting and then I hold the the actual piece uh, like I would my other knitting needle. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. I don't know if it's a good way or a bad way or what. And I think what I'm doing is I'm crocheting into every second hoop here to kind of close it down quite fast. And my tension isn't great now on the old crochet or maybe it's the hook. The yarn is kind of bulky anyway. But the thing about the great thing about crochet, it's so fast to rip out and it's so fast to redo. So if you make a mistake, I can just re like take it out and redo it. It's so nice. So yeah, no, I'm absolutely having a blast with this. Um, I was working last night and in between patients, I was able to do quite a lot. Um, so I'm doing, honestly, I don't know the difference between English and American terms, but I would call this a, a double crochet and then this is a single crochet. And then to get the little ridge, I crocheted into the back loop of this little single crochet rib going across here. And then I forgot to do that up here, but nobody's gonna notice. It's gonna be the top of my head. Life's too short to be noticing that sort of nonsense. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I was even thinking now, actually just now, do you know those hats that leave a space for your ponytail? Maybe I could do that with this. No, I'll do a hat because then my husband can wear it and it's not just got like, you know, space for the soul to enter through the top of his head. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have like a couple of hats in the house that like anyone can just throw on if they're going out for a walk or whatever. Um, oh gosh, I can hear the bees. There's not many butterflies out, I've noticed. There's two Bedalia uh, plants or Budlia, whatever you call them. And uh, normally they're absolutely covered in butterflies this time of year and I don't see any. I see lots of bees, which is good, but no butterflies. Anyone else noticing that around the place? Um, from a homemaking perspective, I have been, um, I have been making a lot of cabbage stuff because cabbage is in season and a friend of mine has a little uh, organic farm and she does CSA boxes and she had literally tons of cabbage left over so um, I picked up an extra three heads and I made loads of pickled coleslaw and I made kimchi and I made sauerkraut I think I need to finish off the sauerkraut today it's been kind of sitting doing a fermenting thing oh no hang on I need to look it up but um I asked in on Instagram for advice about sauerkraut because it's not really in the Irish culture to be doing sauerkraut and I've done kimchi before and that's fairly straightforward but sauerkraut for some reason in my head it's a little bit harder. I think it's because the brine comes from the cabbage itself and I think I didn't like mix it enough like my friend from Poland she was telling me that they actually stand on it like they do like like grapes you know when you're making wine so I was like oh I didn't do much of that I just kind of put the salt in and kind of give it a little mix around and then left it and not much brine came out um so I added a little bit more with a two percent solution of salt and water so I think it's going to be fine, but and it's completely covered now. I've kind of got I've got it compressed and covered in the brine now. But yeah, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I just think I wait. A couple, I think it's been. When did I do it? I did it on Thursday and it's now Sunday. So I think you leave it like three to five days 
and then taste it and see what it's like, see what's happening. And then you pop it into the fridge and it should keep for a long time in the fridge. Now, I don't know, it's not, it's a, it's a quite particular taste and it's not really a taste that we tend to go for in our palate. But again, you know, I think it's so good for you that I think it will be worth trying to find recipes or find ways to eat it um, that would be nice. Um, I think adding it to a salad might be interesting, kind of mixing up that quite, it's, I find quite a salty taste. I don't know if anyone else gets that, but, um, oh, hang on, I did that wrong. Back, 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 you demon. Oh, <laughs> that's the Toronto flight, the London to Toronto flight goes straight over our house so um yeah has anyone ever got that app called sky scanner it's really good you can track all the planes and all the airplanes and um helicopters that go by your house because they all have to be registered so sky scanner so good oh another really good app if you're interested is called the merlin app and it listens to the bird song around you and it can identify all the birds by their song and i'm like that's the cutest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's really effective. I really recommend it. Um, and it's lovely if you're kind of trying to teach kids or yourself about what type of birds are around you and your ecology, your local ecology. I think you can download various um, like databases of bird sound song. Um, like I've got the European and UK one and there's definitely a North American one. Uh, I can't remember it anymore off the top of my head because obviously I am an uneducated cretin. <laughs> I wasn't looking for them. Um, but yeah, so I've just come to the end of my round here and I'm literally, in, I'm kind of just about to join the round. If you see that? I don't know if you can see that. And I am not going to join it with that colour from the same round. I'm going to pick up the colour from the bottom round and just pull straight through. And then that I find that makes a really nice join and you don't see too much of a jump. Sorry, no, this one. So yeah, I, I find if you're just about to join, join it with the colour from the row below and it makes a really nice um a really nice join. I find it works really, really well. And then, so, so I'm kind of decreasing every orange round and then the, the brown rounds, I'm just doing straight, straight up, just to kind of hold it together a little bit because it kind of gets a bit holy, a little bit gapy. Don't like that. Um, yeah, so how is your summer going? Are you taking part in Tour the Fleece? I'd love to know. Um, what your What's your project going to be? Or how is your summer going? I'd love to get back into... Oh, I must. So I made a... Um, <laughs> it's not finished. It'll be finished by the time she's three. We had a birthday recently and she's two now. Can you believe it? It's crazy. And um, I... It, for her first birthday, I actually hand embroidered this little banner, like happy birthday. And I want to pull it out every year. But the thing is that like, I've meant to go back in and, um, you know, put it back on it, turn it inside out and finish it off really nicely. And maybe put a little bit of uh, like lace or something on the bottom of the bunting. I got halfway through and I'm like, okay, by the time she's three, I'll actually have this <laughs> done. But I can't find the fabric anymore. I don't know where the fabric is gone. I need to get into my craft room and I may, I may need to enlist some assistance from local local um, charity work <laughs> charity workers or uh, <laughs> I'll have to ask some charity off my local crafty friends to like come in and help me because I just don't know what to do with myself. I think I need to do a serious clear out. We've only lived in this house two years and it's already full of nonsense. Um, so yeah, so I think 
I have already done a de-stash, but I think I might go around and do another round of de-stashing. I'll see because I'm just not getting around to it. Or do I keep it for the rest of my life? And when I get my life back, I'll go back and be like, oh, you loco yarns, you know, like there's a lot of yarn there that I've bought and that they're not making anymore. And it's just heartbreaking to like let it go because I really want to use it. And the dyers, like either it's really hard to get, say UK yarn, that's really hard to get now because the customs are so outrageous because of Brexit. And a lot of them like mean something because they, you know, I bought them at a certain time in my life or I was traveling or, you know, I bought them from that person. It means so much. And I just feel like, <laughs> you know, you know, anyway, um, so that's what I'm at mentally currently um, is I just don't want to go into that craft room because it scares me because the concept of all the all the stuff I want to do it just makes me sad because I just don't have time to do it but anyway honestly I think I might finish this while I'm up no I won't I won't I won't um, my husband is going to be back with herself any minute now so I will leave you and I hope you enjoy this little chat. Um, I've missed them and I'm going to try and make it a little bit more of a thing that anytime I get to myself, I'm going to actually use it to do things I love instead of the laundry <laughs> or cooking or cleaning because that has to get done anyway. So when the weather's lovely, when the sun is nice, when I'm feeling good, I'm going to do things that make me feel good because otherwise I will collapse and burn out so that's my plan to not do that and to get back to sharing with my friends and my people who are you guys so thank you so much for sticking with me I love chatting to you and I love hearing your comments as well on anything that's going on in your life whatever you're making and um, yeah let's have a chat in the comments and let's catch up love you bye Thank you.